All right. Thanks, Bradley. Um, could you please introduce yourself for the record? Sure. Good morning, uh, Committee and Chair. Uh, Bradley Woods is my name. I'm the CEO of the Australian Hotels Association, Western Australia. I'm also the National Executive Director of Tourism Accommodation Australia, uh, which is Australia's peak industry body representing the accommodation hotel sector. Um, and in terms of, uh, I suppose, other qualifications, uh, I hold board positions on a number of other organisations, both within the tourism and the accommodation sector. Thank you. Uh, before we begin with our questions, do you have any questions about your attendance here today? No, all good. Would you like to make an opening statement? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a privilege to, uh, to present to you this morning, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, this is an issue that's of critical importance to Western Australia's accommodation industry. <coughs> Over the past decade, there have been fewer, uh, th th there've been no fewer uh, greater threats to the viability of the state's accommodation sector than the legitimisation and the proliferation of unregulated and illegal short-stay properties. The work being undertaken by this committee is obviously extremely important because it draws a line in the sand, not only for the accommodation industry, but for all legitimate, law-abiding, registered uh, uh, businesses throughout the state of Western Australia who are registered in their relevant industries and sectors. As policy makers, Parliament has an important responsibility of putting in place legal and regulatory frameworks for business and for consumer protection. Businesses have the obvious responsibility of adhering to those frameworks as the minimum standard expected. This inquiry has been provided with overwhelming evidence from the industry, accommodation providers and individuals across Australia that law-abiding businesses are being significantly disadvantaged because of online facilitators who have established platforms that are designed and intended to support and encourage non-compliant market participants who refuse to play by the rules. The outcome of this inquiry will send a very clear signal to all of WA's businesses, both large, small and micro, who are regulated and licensed, that we have re not reached a position of discrimination against law-abiding businesses in favour of those who operate under the cloak of protection of online platforms who use misdirection and non-transparent tactics in order to game the system. There is a wide range of regulated professions and industries that will be watching these proceedings and the outcome of this inquiry to determine whether licensing still has any meaning or whether we've truly entered an era of non-compliance being normalised and government being rendered redundant. Failure to ensure everyone in a, in a particular industry plays by the same rules will ensure that we do not undermine the proper development of WA's tourism industry, there's no threat to jobs, that we don't see future, past and present investment decisions undermined, that we don't see an undermining of confidence in the state, that the authority of rules and laws of decision makers and regulators is not undermined, that we create a two-tiered health and safety system and send a clear signal that if you're big enough and utilise the right technology, then the rules, regulations and laws of a state jurisdiction can be simply ignored. As background, I'll just give some information about the AHA. We're the peak industry body representing the hotel and accommodation industry, the hospitality and tourism industry in Western Australia, and have been doing so for over 125 years. Our membership is diverse. We've seen representations made to this committee and in the public that have tried to suggest that the AHA is only representing the big end of town. Nothing could be further from the truth. In terms of the WA accommodation industry, it is a diverse market that ranges from small family-run hotels to large corporate chains. As anyone who lives in WA will know, there are hundreds upon hundreds of people who run small to medium-sized accommodation properties throughout our state. It's the small country pubs and motels that offer accommodation, the bed and breakfast, the service departments, the motels, the boarding houses, the service caravans, the licensed holiday homes, the backpacker hostels and the myriad of registered, legal, legitimate, law-abiding business owners who are being affected and undermined because of one or two multinational global giants who wish to destabilise the short-stay accommodation industry in our state. The regulated accommodation sector plays a vital role in WA's economy. It supports tens of thousands of jobs directly and many tens of thousands more indirectly. The industry plays a pivotal role in delivering a variety of training and apprenticeship opportunities for West Australians. It's the accommodation hotels that support the service staff, the banquet staff, the front and back house staff, the administrative staff, the management staff, all which represent an important career pathway and opportunities for local people. 
The industry helps retract, attract and retain investment in building and refurbishment, small, medium and large scale properties. Importantly, WA's accommodation industry is often the first and most prominent public face of the state's tourism industry and plays a vital role in shaping visitor perceptions. Collectively, the hotel industry spends hundreds of millions of dollars each and every year on marketing the state of Western Australia collectively and encouraging tourists to visit the state. Unregistered accommodation platforms do none of the above. For example, I challenge Airbnb or Stays to show us how many apprentices or trainee positions they have created in Western Australia. There are a multitude of benefits that the state derives from the registered accommodation industry. The same cannot be said for Airbnb or other similar platforms, which is what makes this inquiry so important. The sharing accommodation economy is not new, but in recent years it's grown exponentially around the world. Here are some of the facts that we believe the committee might find of particular interest and focus. Airbnb may be a slick PR machine when it comes to their efforts, but the facts don't lie. In May 2016, there were 5,425 Airbnb listings in WA. There are now over 12,500 listings. The original intent of platforms like Airbnb was to facilitate genuine hosted home sharing, such as the letting out of a spare room or a granny flat. And I want to make it clear that genuine room sharing, the listing of a spare room or a granny flat to provide short stay accommodation where the host lives in the house and shares the experience is something that the AHA strongly supports. We believe it adds value to the tourism economy. The shared experience like a bed and breakfast is something that you can't get in a single occupancy stay. Genuine hosted accommodation offers a diverse and different accommodation product where guests have the benefit of a local home host showing them the Australian way of life. This is similar to someone who stays in a hotel and meets the locals, gets to, work, gets to see them at work and serve the property. Compared to the unhosted accommodation, unregulated short stay properties where guests obtain keys from a lockbox with no day to day supervision, monitoring or support or engagement. As per the evidence provided to the committee by Inside Airbnb in its submission, entire home listings dominate in WA, making up 70% of all Airbnb listings and 92% of their revenue. The data clearly shows that investors are increasingly using the platform to rent out more than they're just their primary residence. Over the past two years, there's been a 40% rise in the number of hosts with six to 10 Airbnb listings on their own. So I'll say that again, over the past two years, there's been a 40% increase in the number of hosts who themselves are hosting six to 10 Airbnb listings. That can't be their home. It's worth pointing out that from May 2016 to now, the percentage of listings where they have a private room within a house, which is the definition of home sharing, has dropped by over 30%. The data clearly shows a massive growth in unregulated short stay accommodation, the commercialization of unregulated short stay accommodation, and a move away from hosted sharing, the original intent of such platforms. It's important to point out that that original intent of home sharing could easily be licensed and accommodated through bed and breakfast licences. And there are many, many bed and breakfast operators throughout Western Australia who have legitimately performed and delivered licensed accommodation through shared room experiences and have complied with the laws. There needs to be a redress here for those particular people who are working in the industry who are now facing competition from those who choose not to register. Hotels, motels, bed and breakfast, service departments and hostels must all comply with a wide range of regulations, health and safety provisions, taxation requirements and red tape, and many properties that are listed on platforms such as Airbnb do not. It's very difficult to know which these properties are. When there's no address shown, there's no corporate ownership provided, there's no full name of the proprietor provided, it's all performed in a manner that's designed to misdirect and to provide very little information for regulators or potentially prosecutors. Unregulated short stay accommodation is not only undermining jobs and investment and training opportunities, but also contributing to housing affordability problems. Anglicare recently provided just one of the many reports that have demonstrated the link between short stay accommodation and rental affordability. And this morning I'd like to table their report for the committee's uh, submission and consideration. 
the USA's Economic Policy Institute reported into the impact of Airbnb, and it concluded that Airbnb was raising housing costs. This report clearly found that the benefits of Airbnb were far outweighed by its cost to the economy and local communities. To ensure that there is an even playing field in the accommodation industry and to safeguard local jobs, community amenity and guest safety, it's critical that short stay properties are all subject to appropriate regulation. So what is the solution? Western Australia is in a unique advantage in how we approach this issue. We can see what is working and is not working around the world. We have the benefit of seeing the platforms that have been tested. It's with this knowledge that we've formulated an effective, fair and efficient preferred approach to recommending to this committee to consider for regulating short-stay accommodation. Platforms like Airbnb have grown exponentially as a result of utilising technology. It makes sense that the best way to regulate platforms is also through employing the same technology. The AHA strongly supports the introduction of a regulatory framework to capture all providers of short-stay accommodation, and our submission includes recommendations for a regulatory solution that outlines five key aspects for the Committee's consideration. They are a mandatory registration system, which would be a requirement to ensure that transparency, accountability and enforcement of all short-stay accommodation properties can occur across the state. It's a critical regulatory measure that's been agreed to by Airbnb in other jurisdictions, including the birthplace of Airbnb itself, San Francisco. We are also recommending a one-host, one-home policy, which limits hosts to sharing only their primary residence and facilitating genuine sharing whilst ensuring that multiple properties on a commercial basis are not purchased as investments with the explicit purpose of competing directly with regulated legitimate accommodation whilst avoiding regulatory compliance and licensing requirements. We've also recommended that appropriate fire and safety standards be adopted to ensure that guests are afforded adequate protections to ensure that, their that the current unregulated short-stay properties are appropriately equipped and have minimum health, fire and safety provisions. The current gap in such provisions between regulated and unregulated properties presents an unacceptable to risks and hosts alike. And let's remember the origin of those regulations. The Building Code of Australia is emanated from many decisions over the years that have been considered because of disasters and other problems that have occurred, whether it's through backpacker fires or buildings that have that exploded or other problems that have occurred. The Building Code of Australia has been formed with the expert opinion of builders and architects and specialists and tradespeople who understand the industry and have decided to reform and, in, and, and inform the Australian building community of minimum standards. And there is a definite requirement for minimum standards to exist between a residential home and apartment building versus a short stay accommodation provider because the individuals in the short stay building do not have any of the history or knowledge of that building, where the fire escapes are, where the emergency exits are, how to get in and out, all of the factors that can impact. The requirements around smoke detection, sprinkler systems, emergency exit signage are very different. And for us, the build cost of a properly registered regulated building is approximately 40% more than, an, than a full uh, permanent residential apartment building and there is clearly a cost difference that's built in. We're also recommending data sharing requirements and a requirement that short stay accommodation platforms like Airbnb be required to share their data with government to underpin the success of any attempts to regulate the platforms and their listings. Presently regulated, regulators, policy makers and agency have no exact data on where short stay accommodation properties are located. Unlike registered accommodation providers such as hotels, Jurisdictions around the world are increasingly insisting on short-stay accommodation platforms to share their data in order to enforce regulation and policies relating to their activity. And finally, protecting community amenity must be considered. It's an obvious issue of concern regarding the current status of short-stay accommodation in WA and that the impact these properties are having on affected neighbourhood and a community amenity. In many cases, neighbouring residents of short-stay properties have no say on whether these properties open and commence activity, whether they take place, do they have access to timely and effective resources in the event of a problem, such as noise, breaches of the peace, breaches of law or antisocial behaviour. Requiring potential short-stay hosts to engage with neighbours and consult when seeking planning approval from local government empowers communities and empowers residents. Finally, in terms of my, my formal presentation, we heard a lot 
from organisations like the CCI and Airbnb providing ill-informed advice to this committee about the impact on tourism if the industry was to be properly enforced or regulated. They have not provided evidence and they have not tendered to this committee any evidence to demonstrate that their claims are in fact factually based. There are plenty of jurisdictions around the world that have introduced proper regulation on short stay accommodation and have continued to see growth after growth of their tourism sector. And Barcelona stands out as a perfect example of where that tourism industry has gone from strength to strength, even though they require the registration of these short stay home based accommodation. Thank you for the opportunity to present today and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for a very comprehensive opening statement. Um, 